Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video where today we are playing the Red Dead Redemption 1 port remaster, whatever you want to call it. But we're picking right up, right where we left off in the previous video. Mr. Wes Dickens. Shed's clear, Marshal. Sorry guys, I had some pizza stuck in my spacer. Shed out back. Make a run for it when it's clear. Thank you. I was convinced I was dead. My God. You can make a run for the shed. Keep your head down. Thank you. They said they were gonna kill us all. Looks all clear, fellas. Let's check up on the farmers. Let's 
escaping to the south. But then some chasing him down like wild dogs. I thought you were supposed to protect us, Marshal. You folk eat men. Hmm. You ain't nothing. You just some men on a government payroll taking money that the rest of us have to pay for with our lives. Yeah. What is wrong with this country? Not up, men. The man that kills the boss of that bunch gets fifty dollars. It ain't about the money, Marshal. These are people's lives, people's homes. <laughs> down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. You know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody, take cover! In that shed! I don't think Dutch ever said that in Red Dead Redemption 2. This is the best cover we got. I'll kill you! I just shot a horse. Fuck. That guy looked like Bill. It was always gonna end this way. Hey, look what I got here. There's something that you're still breathing. Come on, boy. Come on, Bessie. Give. Norman Deke. <laughs> Nice to see you again, buddy. Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is gonna help us get to Bill. <coughs> Ain't you, Norman? Thank you, Mr. Dick. Mighty kind. Fuck you! Hog time. Let's get him to jail. Poor Norman Deke. New weaponry. Sick. I can't skin a horse. I feel too bad. I feel bad shooting a horse in this game. And it's stupid that it's kind of, that it's an option to be able to shoot a horse in game. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I'm 
Might as well loot. You know what? I might as well go take Bill out myself right now. Be funny, you just go into Fort Mercer and absolutely fuck up Bill Williamson without any of their help. Oh shit, train! Get out of here! Yeah! Mission with Bonnie. Oh shit. Sorry guys, I had to sneeze again. Good, it spawned me here. I'm gonna go see what they got at the general store. Oh no, I'm gonna go to the gunsmith. I got two hundred dollars. Let's see what I can buy at the gun store. How are you, friend? You sure Vulcan pistol. I'm thinking that were mutually beneficial. Those men get more bones. That's what I want. I'll buy the bandolier next. How do you do? Pop, 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 pop. Let's see what the general store has for sale. Watch your step, partner. Everything here is proudly made right here in the USA. This dude out here is preaching. Let's just reload that save game. Thanks for stopping by.
Well, I was gonna buy a new horse, but I ain't got that kind of money to buy a new horse. All right, Mr. Dick. All right, fine, Dickens. Whatever. No, I'm actually gonna take a stagecoach over to the McFarland Ranch. Well, fuck you too, then, horse. Okay, it's gonna take too long. I need a rest. Thanks, partner. Oh shit, barn's on fire. Excuse me, Mr. Marston. Have you seen my father anywhere? No. He went out this morning to ride the land and was supposed to be back hours ago. I don't know. The ranch hands have been out looking, but so far they've found nothing. Well, come on, let's go look for him. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I'm sure it's nothing, but I worry about the old fool. Come on! about this. It's not like him to be away for so long. Don't worry. We'll find him. He's not as young as he used to be. What if he's hurt himself? The father can still handle himself just fine, Miss McFarland. He's built like an oak. You're probably right, but I can't help worrying. Don't you have any brothers or sisters, Miss McFarland? I had six brothers, but five of them died, either from sickness or foolish choices. And the other one? He left for the east and never came back. Must be getting on for ten years ago now. He's a high and mighty banker in New York, according to his last letter. He should be here Bruh. helping you and your pa. I don't want his help. He can live his life any way he wants. But when I see those city fellers coming in on the <clears> railway, <throat> all dressed up like a sore toe, I fear a little for his soul. He switched his saddle for a tie, and that's fine. I just never met a man in a tie I could trust. Mm. Who's that over there? Yeah. Gee up! Mm. Daddy! What happened? Nothing nice. Wrestlers, I guess. Maybe they bother their twins that bunch. Now you head back to the ranch right now and fetch your wagon. Yes, sir. Marston, you watch after her. I'll do that, sir. Mm. Yeah! <clears throat> Careful! What could have happened to those poor men? And their horses were dead, too. I think we should get back there as soon as we can. Who could have done something like that? Your boss seemed to have an idea who it was. Let's just do what he says and get the wagon. Rustlers, I've got a good mind to head over to Pike's Basin myself. I don't think that's a good idea. And you're no You can see that the barn's on fire from here. Do you really want to know? It's disgusting. You never met the men I killed. I heard the way you talk about that gang you were in. Like there was some twisted morality to what you did. We all have a code. Only some of us don't realize. The outlaw with the code? How wonderfully romantic. The reluctant murderer, the noble criminal, there's nothing more depressing than a man who's found a way to think the bad into good. Oh my god! The barn's on fire! Let's go! Come on, boy!
Sure know how to handle yourself. Thanks, Martin. Mm. Yes, John, thanks. You <clears throat> well, you saved the ranch. If you'll excuse me, I, I've got chores to attend to. Hey, w hold on a second over there. Sincerely, John. Thank you. Well, I did all I could, Miss McFarland. Sorry about all the damage. That gang seems to really want you out of here. Yeah, well, my father fought Indians. I scarcely think we're gonna be frightened by some white trash. White trash can be pretty frightening. Well, they don't frighten me. Good. John, my family owes you a great debt. I think you got enough debt. You saved my life. All I ask of you is this. If I get back home and get my farm started back up, you'll sell me some cattle. I prefer doing business with people I know. Of course, Mr. Marston. It'd be my pleasure. Um, well, you get some rest. I've got to go see how my father's bearing up. I just realized she's wearing boots. Come on, Rachel, get over here. Let's go. I wonder why John actually got on that ferry that we see him get on in the middle of the or at the beginning of the game. I wonder if he came from San Denis or wherever. Because you would think he wouldn't need to be on the the uh, ferry boat if he's a Beecher's Hope. Oh, the strange man! Wow. It's a very pretty view from up here. I know who you are. <laughs> Hello, John. John Marston. Do I know you? I hope so. I seem to know you. I'm pretty good at remembering faces. Are you? Do you remember Hattie McCourt's face? Who? She was a girl Dutch Vanderlyn shot in the head on that raid on the ferry a few years back. Same one you got shot on. Pretty girl, until her eye was hanging out by a thread of tendon and her brain was plastered over a wall. Not really. I'm in the cord. Then why would you remember me, friend? You've forgotten far more important people than me. What's your game, friend? I don't have a game, John. Listen. Sometimes, I just wish I'd known more about life. Wish I'd had better guidance. A friend of mine was drunk as a skunk in the saloon on Thieves' Landing. I think he's gonna be unfaithful to his dear wife. Why don't you head over there and see if you can advise him how best to proceed? What do you think I am? I know what you are, John. Just if you've got the time, friend. Well, oh, God damn.
Didn't know you could even kill the strange man. All right. Oh, well. Okay. I really didn't know you could actually shoot the strange man. like about Red Dead Redemption 2 is that you could go into cinematic mode and your character would auto steer for you pop 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 drop pop 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 oh shit I was actually about to pull the trigger on that one guy something to do with that government boy. We'll talk to him. Find out what he knows. Fucking is. Where is she, Marston? Who? Who? My daughter, you fucking scum. Where's Bonnie? I don't know. I haven't seen her since after the fire. Why? Why? Because she hadn't been seen since yesterday afternoon. You know, I don't think I can cope. If I lose another child... Now, Drew, nobody's lost anything yet. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, Mr. Marshall! Mr. Marshall! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Hell's that. Hey, buddy! <laughs> that be your next fucking mayor. Even better! Good day, Mr. McFarlane. Get down from that horse, boy, or I'll shoot. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, mister. Mm -hmm. Not if Drew McFarlane wants to see his bony back in one piece. Hey, Mr. McFarlane! This is a nice girl you got there. <laughs> Get down from there! You know, part of me's got to thinking I should just marry her myself. Give her a baby and that. What do you want? That's better. I want Norman Deke. I want him set free. Then you'll get your daughter back, mister. We don't do deals with outlaws, boy. Yeah, you do. Let's not waste each other's time pretending otherwise. Whole government themselves ain't much more than a bunch of crooks. This is the land of opportunity, mister. And I'm giving you the opportunity to get your daughter back before 15 friends of mine take out all their anger and their loneliness on her. Where the hell is she? Where is she, boy? 
Bring Deke up to Tumbleweed in a couple hours. And don't get no funny ideas, or I will slit that horse throat myself! Mm. You boys have a pleasant afternoon. Yeah! What do we do? We do as he says. You and me, Marshal. Mr. McFarland, I'll get you your daughter back. I owe her that. Please do. <laughs> I'll teach you some respect for the law. Hurry up, boy. Let's go. Quick as you can, deputy. Make sure he's tied on good. Stay with me, Marston. I won't let anything happen to her, sir. Let's ride hard to Tumbleweed. See, this is what happens when the Federals interfere in our affairs. Are you happy now? No, I ain't happy at all. And I already told you, I ain't with the government. Now you say that, John, but the only thing I know for sure is who sent you. They made me come here. They gave me no choice. That's your federal government, Mr. Johnson. They come down here dressed as cocky as the King of Diamonds, talking a lot of flannel about helping us, about spreading peace and civilization to the West, but they brought nothing but trouble and taxes. I agree with you. Wolves in sheep clothing, all of them. Rob you, and it makes you pay to have someone investigate the crime on your behalf. People around here have been fooled into feeling protected when they're worse off than they were before. You fellas I know don't care about people. All they care about is lining their pockets. Why is this sorry son of a bitch so important to them? Norman Deke, Williamson, right hand man. In other words, a glorified Bruh. errand boy. Wait, Marshal. I'll be back for you. Bill Standards have slipped. We already the built right you hand man. Once, you ugly That's the kind of man who's mean enough to be second in command, but too cowardly and stupid. Bruh, <laughs> that's funny. Don't ever use that line near your deputies. You know, for his sake, they'd best not have laid a finger on Miss McFarland. Yeah, cause John will mess him up himself. Tumbleweed, a lonely godforsaken place. Some people say it's haunted. It was quite a town back in its day. Then yep. they built the railroad to Armadillo and went clean past Tumbleweed. And that was that. Pretty soon everybody had up and left. Now it's just thieves, smugglers, and bandits. Scum like Deke here. Oh, popular spot for lynchings, too. Let's try to avoid that if we can, Marshal. I just hope you're not taking advantage of the McFarland, Marston. They saved my life. They gave me food and bed when they had no idea who I was. I owe them more than I can ever repay. That's just they've been through a lot. Well, they're both vulnerable, different ways. I wouldn't have been running in and out of a burning barn to save their horses otherwise. Oh, I know you helped. Just like you helped me. But you got your reasons for doing it. It's no secret why I'm here, Marshal. I told you the very first time I walked into your office. I trust you. It's just all this business with Blackwater and Williamson and the past. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard not to have doubt. I understand. I never planned to be in the lawman business neither. How is this mess supposed to turn out? Pinning an outlaw to do the work of a lawman. That's madness. Ain't much difference between the two, as far as I can tell. There have to be rules, Marston. Even you must understand that. It's easy to make up rules, but they ain't much use if people don't understand why. Like my son. If I tell him not to do something, he'll do it anyway, just as black. If I punish him, he resents me for it. But if I show him why it's wrong, at least he has reason not to do it again. That's nonsense. Without laws, we're nothing more than animals. Now look at Deke here. Go to hell! Man has worked hard at civilization. Your boy steps out of line, you whack him. He does it again, whack him harder. You're a good man, Marshal, and I respect what you're trying to do. But what I've seen since I've arrived here, the law ain't really working. Criminals are like weeds, Marston. Quicks you stomp one out, another one sprouts up in its place. It's the nature of places. You know that as well as I do. <clears throat> I can't wait for you to meet the boy.
John. You'll be exchanging the prisoner for Bonnie in the middle of town. Keep your eyes open. I sincerely doubt these scum plan to play fair. Fair my ass. Bet. Besides, Norm here is gonna be my shield, ain't you, Norm? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. Marston, lead Deke into town. Make sure you keep a gun on that son of a bitch. I'm sure it's been nice for the boys to have a whore to play with. I hear those rancher girls like you in the rear. Maybe she won't want to go home. She's been fucked so good. Why don't you save some of that breath for breathing? What are you waiting for? Untie me, pillars! Wait, where's Bonnie, you bastards? <laughs> Try I ain't here to... Exactly helping me. If you think I'm gonna lower myself by making a joke about being all tied up, you got another thing coming. Come on. Crazy how fast this building has fallen apart since 1908 when Red Dead Redemption 2's prologue takes place. Or epilogue. Because I think a character lived in that house in 1908. And here, we're, here the character is, three years later, and the house is almost completely fallen over.
Riding back to Armadillo in Chola Springs. Woo! Howdy, partner. so safe out here, miss. Oh, Jenny. You can call me Jenny. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, I'm safe because I, I have faith. So uh, faith can move mountains. That's the whole point. You're trying to move a mountain? Oh, no. Uh, I can't do anything. But with faith... I have medicine. <laughs> Miss Jenny. <coughs> Miss Jenny. <sighs> Don't look like the Almighty's much inclined to help you out here. <sighs> I was kind of worried about you, so I brought you some medicine. Oh, oh heavens. Oh, praise you, Lord. I knew you'd save me. <coughs> Excuse me? You see... It was only through his will that you were ordered to save me. Tell me, <coughs> were there any... So I was looking at uh, achievements. Achievements and trophies, I think that's what they're... I don't know what they're called on the PlayStation, so... I call them achievements. But I think the PlayStation calls them trophies. You tell me to slow down, motherfucker. You about ran into me. Come on. That's a kill. What did John just say? Coming with me, friend. 
a great part. He'll taste some armadillo justice for sure. Kill a cougar with a stick of dynamite. Did not need to know that, miss. The bank has an interior, but I can't go in it. I can tell you with no uncertainty that miracle cures are no laughing matter. I bid you a good day, sir. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How have you been keeping? I'm well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Cheap, London, New Waverly, New York, and Armadillo, New Austin. At your service. At my service. At everyone's service, at the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are your wounds? Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, much, much better. But then, they would be. Mm -hmm. Would be. I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Marston. Ah, I'm sure you do. Mm. And I'm sure for just two dollars an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, but for you, sir. I do a bulk discount rate of 195 an ounce. <laughs> as long as you buy 100 ounces or more, that's a lot of immortality. Uh, give it up, old man. That's Mr. He's West Dickens to you, boy. Give it up, old man. <laughs> um, listen, Marston, I'm broke. But this stuff is good. It works. I need a healthy young man like you. <laughs> Come along, and let's ride over to my newest customer at Ridgewood, and I'll explain while we go. A 
Okay. <laughs> All right, John. Let us make haste for Ridgewood Farm. Oh, I seriously have to drive the wagon? Seriously? The old bastard. I heard about you, I'm Mr. Kidding. West Dickens. And I about you, John Marston. Good week in the week. Gullible out of their hard-earned money. My dear boy, it is you who is gullible, if I may be so bold, for heeding such ill-informed scuttle. You're as full of wind as a horse with the collar. I have been blessed with the gift of language, and for that I will not apologize, but the West Dickens elixirs speak for themselves. My thousands of happy customers attest to that. Those men trying to kill you didn't look so happy. <laughs> Skepticism is the bastard child of progress, John. Knowledge makes a fool into a doubting Thomas. It's the cross I bear as a pioneer in the fields of commerce and medical research. You seem to be mistaking me for an idiot. My tonic cures all known ailments, that I can guarantee you. But for the sake of argument, even if it didn't, surely there is still value in giving a person the belief they can feel better. I like how if belief I is in bold letters. Champ, how do you explain the fine battle in which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at death's door. You should thank the doctor for that. I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing Othello there has never been. And so shall you, a fair Iago or Cassie. Bruh, seems legit. Like he's ridiculous. Him. I like Wes Dickens, but man, he's a ridiculous Going character. Here, the flourish, the bow. We are operating in a competitive marketplace. Alright, come on, John. Let's roll faster. How does this involve me? We're going to use your God-given talents to our advantage. I'm really starting to I'll regret this. I'll you off at the outskirts of Ridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. Once I'm set up, saunter nonchalantly into the cloud that is sure to come. Eventually, I will call you up to try my tonic. After extolling the virtues, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the king. Such as? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. So it is all a shame. No, no, just a little innocent ballyhoo to grease the wheels of enterprise, that's all. Do you think that buxom young girl you see on the Boyette camera posters knows the first thing about photography? Best you alight here. here. You little shit, get back here, West Dickens! No, I'm kidding. Wes Diggins is a shyster, but he's probably the best bet to get into Bill Williamson. Lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, uh. Oh, Wait! He is still adjusting to his powerful new eye. Charlatan! <laughs> Remarkable! The eyesight of an eagle. Granted by imbibing duck. Steady yourself, stranger. Go home! Have you ever seen such an eye? Behold the power of the elixir plucked out of the sky. Hey! Hey! What? You think you can put a hole in a man's hat? Walk away, do you? They don't work like that around here. Come on, a 
Are you a man or not? A challenge of battle has been offered to our... Uh, prepare for a display of Herculean force. Get the hell off here! Alright, I think I'm going to save the game and end the video here. Got quite a bit done in this episode. Anyways, guys, thank you all for coming out. Appreciate all your love and support. Make sure to like, the comment, subscribe, hit that little bell. All that good stuff really helps the channel grow. And as always, I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, guys.